We're all ready to go. All right. Greg, you good? He's ready to go as well, sir. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and call the work study session for the Tempe City Council for order for June 18th, 2020. Due to the concerns over the COVID-19 exposure, the city has implemented measures to protect our community, including the closing of the council chambers and limiting public attendance to electronic means only. Members of the public may view the live meeting proceedings on Tempe Channel 11. Attend, uh, you can also attend the meeting virtually through the Cisco WebEx events by visiting tempe.gov slash clerk. More information and or submit a written comments to the city of Tempe uh, speaker comment card on the tempe.gov slash clerk uh, web page. Now we'll go ahead and turn it over. The first item on our agenda is a call to the audience for the issue review session. Uh, members do have up to three minutes to address the council on the items listed on this agenda. I will look to our Madam Clerk. Do we have any speakers on the items that are on this agenda? No, Mayor, we do not. All right. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close that portion of the call to the audience and go on to the second item, which is the issue review items. Um, and the first I update is uh, COVID-19 update. I will hand this over to our city manager, Mr. Chin. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, as an initial matter, I would guess, I would just ask you, Mr. Mayor, if you were interested, at least at the beginning, to speak to the proclamation or at your uh, direction, I'm happy to give a brief update uh, regarding some of the goings on here at the city. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that, that's fine. Okay, will do. Um, to that point, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, this past Monday, June 15th, marked the beginning of the city of Tempe's limited reopening of certain uh, specified city facilities, specifically the uh, library, uh, the multi-generational centers at Escalante, uh, the West Side multi-generational center, and the North Tempe multi-generational center. Uh, these openings were uh, with some significant modifications, including the requirement that all staff and visitors wear masks, that there would be ample hand sanitizer stations in addition to uh, obviously public access to restrooms for hand washing, uh, that, that uh, total numbers of visitors would be limited in order to ensure physical distancing um, and a requirement or uh, yeah, there would be modifications to work areas to create physical barriers between staff and the public to uh, limit the risk of transmission. Uh, after having uh, visited all the facilities on Monday, I'm happy to say that uh, what I witnessed was that the things that we had put into place actually were being followed, that um, the distances were in fact being kept, um, that staff was prepared. Uh, there was even a couple of uh, kids camps uh, that were taking place at, a, at a, our multi-generational centers where it was clear that the, that the uh, guidelines were being followed. So that's uh, good news. Um, I also wanted to report that we are looking to uh, open uh, the pools uh, that the city currently operates this Saturday. Again, where applicable, similar uh, restrictions would be in place. Uh, also, in addition to those public facilities, the Household Products Collection Center, as well as the compost yard, are also both open to the public. Uh, those are, are facilities that have limited interactions between staff and public. So we felt that given the important uh, uh, role that they play in the community that it made sense to go ahead and have them reopen as well. Uh, we are continuing to study uh, and react to the uh, numbers of reported cases, et cetera, uh, and looking at criteria to see whether or not uh, future openings will be happening um, in the coming weeks. Uh, so we will uh, report that uh, to all of you, Mayor and Council, as well as the public at the point where, where those decisions would be made. Uh, so that's what I have from a COVID-19 update from the City of Tempe. Well, thank you, Andrew, for that. 
Um, I'm trying to, I don't know where I am. Thank you for that. And I do want to mention about uh, the proclamation that was issued. Um, gov slash coronavirus to find more information and also look under the for business button. Uh, this is in response to the current pandemic and the current state as, as we continue to see the numbers rise uh, for the COVID virus. And I see a hand up, Vice Mayor Kuby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had um, a question or two for the city manager. So, Andrew, I wanted to ask, these are questions that come directly from residents and one was to for us to clarify how masks on transit will work if buses are going through multiple jurisdictions and one of those jurisdictions doesn't have a mask policy, how does that work? And the second question being, uh, I know our, the focus will be on education, but how will enforcement work if, if there's a, a need for it? Thank you, Vice Mayor Kuby, uh, members of council. My understanding uh, with regards to transit and especially transit that moves through multiple jurisdictions is that Valley Metro uh, is in the process of creating their own uh, policies for ridership that are going to uh, address that uh, issue. Um, so we are going to be looking to them, at least initially, since it's they run the integrated transit system on behalf of the various uh, communities here in the Valley that we would look to their guidance uh, for that, first of all. Uh, secondly, as far as the enforcement piece goes, I think uh, I appreciate that you mentioned that that education is going to, especially at the beginning, now that you know we've just uh, had this proclamation effective earlier today, that we want to give uh, residents and uh, community members and those who would be uh, potentially susceptible to the proclamation uh, ample opportunity to understand what it is to uh, to get the information uh, made as clear as possible, to give uh, businesses that are affected an opportunity to react uh, to it and be ready. So certainly I think within those first few days, we've got to do quite a bit of education. If at the point that there is a need for enforcement, right now the default enforcement for misdemeanors in the city of Tempe would be the police. However, and I think this is important to note. However, we are also uh, mindful of an understanding of the concerns that the public may have about, you know, especially given the climate in today, uh, of today, to uh, insert police into situations where their presence alone um, could have the, uh, the uh, effect of escalation. So to the extent that we want to de-escalate and keep this education oriented, we, meaning staff, are continuing to have conversations about some of the best approaches and at what point would it make sense to have uh, police in force? Because like I said, it is a, you know, ultimately if, if education fails and enforcement is warranted, it is designated as a misdemeanor uh, in the proclamation. So we are certainly mindful of that. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And just, um, I know we're uh, offering PDF files for businesses to print out posters, but is there also an opportunity for us to print out a lot of them and offer them up to businesses? Thank you. Thank you for the question. I, I think the answer would be, again, if, if that is something that, that is desired by businesses, if we can assist them in obtaining compliance and if and if our uh, provision of not just P 
PDF files that they can download, but actually physically printing them out or assisting in that would help. Um, we would certainly be open to that conversation. Thank you. I'm, before we move forward, I want to go uh, ask Councilmember Erdogan Savage if she can update us on. I know they had a Valley Metro board meeting today, and she's sir, she is our representative. Councilman Arredondo Savage. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Very happy to. We we definitely did have a very robust discussion today about uh, the use of masks on buses and on rail, and uh, there was a, a lot of not just discussion, not just about you know how we move forward and what that looks like, but some of the other cities and some of the other transit agencies that have um, done done similar things and wanting to get best practices from them. So we did give direction, the board did give direction to Valley Metro uh, to um, uh, mandate ma face mat to ban mandate masks, any type of mask face coverings, that was what they had intended. and. Basically, uh, moving forward, the compliance will be mostly by what I think uh, our our city manager mentioned was would be compliance by education, by marketing, by signage, and just really strong encouragement. Um, and one of the things that we're we need to to make sure that uh, we have in the future, and and it still isn't necessarily set in stone yet, is how we can provide face masks for all riders. Uh, we know we're able to probably do it at the transit centers and maybe through the cities. Um, and but really wanting to ultimately do it on buses, at least for, you know, a, a, a set amount of time. So to really encourage that there was actually when it came to some enforcement, some kind of horror stories that we heard with other transit agencies. And, and that's why this method of compliance um, was chosen and we'll be moving forward with. So I'll keep everybody apprised as we move forward. I think they're going to probably roll it out. Uh, on July 1 and the reason being is I think they just want to make sure we get everything set in stone we get all the signage right the marketing materials together and then, then everybody can be on the same page moving forward thank you mayor for the opportunity thank you councilmember Erdano Savage um, anyone have any other questions for uh, Andrew Ching our city manager seeing none we'll now turn over to the Mayor's uh, Youth Advisory Commission updates, as well as the uh, Youth Town Hall. Um, I was, I believe we have either Naomi or Marie Raymond is with us. And I know we have some uh, Mayor's Youth Advisory members that are gonna be presenting a PowerPoint to us, I believe. Hi, Mr. Mayor, this is Adrian Cassio, Mayak Advisor. Um, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, and I want to just extend my appreciation to the MIAC members. Typically, uh, summertime, uh, MIAC is not active. So, um, as you know, we had to reschedule. And, uh, and I'm uh, glad all three of our commissioners were, are here and will be presenting um, today on some annual updates uh, for, of the year and also. Uh, providing some highlights on new town hall action plan. So here today we have um, Reagan Hatch, our MIAC chair, Isis Kelly, our uh, MIAC vice chair, and we have Shay Katero, our youth town hall chair. Let me get my presentation up here. Agent, can you? After Reagan, who, who's the next person? I, I, saw, I know Shay's there, but who's the other oh, one? Yeah. So uh, we have Isis Kelly. Isis, okay, great. Isis is our uh, vice chair. Great, well, welcome to all of you. Thank you. Um, just to confirm, are you able to uh, see my the uh, yes. presentation? Okay, perfect. All right, uh, we'll have, uh, um, I'll, I'm gonna have each of the members just uh, introduce themselves, share a little bit more about themselves. My name is Reagan Hatch. I'm a, I just graduated from Marcos Deniza. I'm going to NAU in the fall, and I am the MIAC chair, and this is my third year in MIAC. Welcome, Reagan. Good to hear from you. Can't see you, but good to hear from you. Um, my name is Isis Kelly. I just finished my freshman year at McClintock High School. I am Mayak's vice chair, and this is my, I'm about to start third year of Mayak. 
Great, thank you. Shay? And then, hi, my name is Shay Katerum. I am a rising senior at Florida Del Sol High School. I am the Youth Town Hall Chair, and I am entering my third year on my app. Great. Hey, if you guys could, just make sure you turn down your volume so it's not echoing so much. Thank you. All righty. Take it away, Adrian or uh, Reagan or... Melissa. All right, so for some Mayak history, uh, Mayak was established in 1980 in response to diverse youth challenges. It's a commission of 24 members from 8th to 12th grade and opportunities to be a voice for Tempe's youth by providing input and initiatives affecting youth. And some updates for this year. Um, we learned a lot about the city of Tempe. We held a retreat at City Hall boardroom. Mayak got to tour City Hall. City departments presented to Mayak. And then this year, we appreciate that we got to work with the city budget process. Mark Day and Wydell Holmes facilitated a budget 101 training. Lucas Stykowski, the intern, helped develop a video to highlight the city budget process. And Mayak uh, commissioners participated in the start tool survey. Some updates, other updates this year. Um, Shay and I got to attend the National Mayor's Youth Summit in LA where we got to meet with other youth councils and talk about their commissions. We attended the League of uh, Arizona Cities and Towns for Youth and CARE 7 came and did a training with MIAC. Okay, so then just a little Youth Town Hall background. So Youth Town Hall is an annual event that gives teens an opportunity to discuss current challenges and opportunities that they are facing. So we gather students from the Tempe Union High School District, the Tempe Elementary District, and the Kyrene Middle School, and they are all invited through their activities, principals, and school faculty. So what the students do is to identify solutions and recommend actions to address challenges that MIAC identifies. And so Mayak will then plan and facilitate the event in partnership with community partners. So for Youth Town Hall this year, it was held on Tuesday, February 25th, 2020 at the Tempe Center for the Arts. Some new additions that we added included the Youth Resource Showcase and a networking workshop by Alberto Olivas. And over 90 participants gathered to address the following topics, which we identified using the START tool. And these topics were police and youth engagement, student life, and teen professional development. Um, sorry about that. One of the students, when we asked for a survey at Youth Town Hall, one of the students said, during school, I have had friends that go to the restroom to cry or have had panic attacks in the restroom because they are so overwhelmed. One of the questions we asked on the survey was, I know how to positively manage negative feelings. Over 40% of students surveyed that they do not agree or strongly agree that they can manage negative feelings. Another student said, how can kids feel more comfortable with counselors? <coughs> Our council recommendation is to, concrete, to increase the capacity of CARE 70 specialists and youth involvement with youth specialists. One of the strategies is having full-time youth specialists on campus to allow more youth engagement activities, include youth and youth specialist interview and selection process, and to create programming for youth specialists to connect with general student body that address emotional well-being and create a youth specialist communication plan with students. This supports quality of life performance measure 3.37. The reason this recommendation matters is by having youth specialists able to facilitate discussions in class may increase the amount of youth who feel comfortable asking for help 
and to de decrease the stigma of mental health in mental health issues like depression, stress, anxiety, etc. Students will more effectively manage negative feelings. Okay, and then our next area identified was that teens want more internships. So one of the quotes that we pulled was, as a member of Tempe Youth Leadership, I've taken a liking to local government and would like to continue experiencing it even when the program ends. So after we took our survey of teens that would be interested in internships through the city of Tempe, we found that over 70% of students surveyed expressed interest in an internship experience with the city of Tempe. And this kind of culminated into the final question, how can teens get more involved in internships? So our council recommendation is to continue and expand the Career Ready Tempe program. So this would include adding placements within city departments in addition to the business placements already in progress, to prepare for intern application and interview processes, to have diverse opportunities and job shadowing, and lastly, to expand eligibility to all students attending Tempe Union High School District schools, regardless of their residency. And lastly, this recommendation matters because more students will feel better prepared for the workforce. In addition, students will gain valuable experience that increases their skill set and knowledge of city government. And students who go to school in Tempe can then work in Tempe and contribute their talent. Police and youth engagement. Um, during the survey at Youth on Hall, one of the students had said, one time my friend was pulled away by an officer and I felt threatened and worried as I thought he was in trouble, but the cop just wanted to let him know something kind. And another one of the questions we asked at the survey at Youth Town Hall was, how do you feel when you see a Tempe police officer? Only 20% of students surveyed, they expressed feeling of feeling safe when they see a police officer. Another student said, is there any way for me to get involved in, police de in the, the police department today, which may decrease negative perceptions toward Tempe PD? Our council recommendation is to create an ongoing dialogue with Tempe PD in person through social media and community conversations. Some of the strategies is to keep officers on campus with more opportunities to engage with students, advertise relevant content to students regarding police engagement activities and events, students to help run social media accounts to post police engagement events and activities, and to include a youth position on the citizens panel for police with same capabilities as other board members. My ex this council recommendation supports strong community connection performance measure 2.06. The reason this recommendation matters is opportunities for youth to engage with Tempe PD may increase positive perceptions and trust. Youth led social media will ensure relevant content to youth and increase awareness of police related events and activities. Having youth representation on the Citizens Panel for Police will allow for a platform for youth to be a part of decision making and to increase knowledge of processes. In my ex uh, outreach for youth engagement. So we would like to include and involve more youth town hall and my ex. Um, and by doing this, we can use social media to promote events and activities and more outreach to our schools, which was from our evaluation feedback from Youth Town Hall. And to expand MIAC's capacity to engage more Tempe youth, I have youth-led social media efforts through the city of Tempe, support in allocating funding through sponsorships and grant applications, and modify commission ordinances to promote more inclusive and diverse membership. And one of these ordinance changes to support MIAC would be to expand eligi eligibility where students are chosen by Tempe zip codes and not solely by what school they attend. And some of these recommendations matter. To increase budget will allow MIAC to support more students at youth town hall and other youth engagement activities. The youth-led social media will ensure relevant content to youth and increase youth to the digital engagement. And then also on the MIAC website, we do have video content that will demonstrate how we can create content catered for social media use. 
and a more inclusive Maya will support the city's I think we're losing you, Reagan. Or I guess who is I I guess this, are you speaking or you guys are you guys there? Hi, this is Adrian. Uh, uh, we just uh, finished the presentation. I think uh, ISIS is on going on mute there. Okay. Hi. okay. So we just want to open up if uh, anyone has any questions or comments at this point. Okay. Well, first, I, I want to thank all of you uh, for your participation. I do want to say hello uh, and great job to both uh, Reagan and Shay and Isis. I really do appreciate everything. I just want to point out that um, as was, as uh, Reagan and Shay mentioned, that they were able to go to the youth. Uh, United States Conference of Mayors is the first youth summit, if you will, uh, with me and with myself and our staff uh, this last summer. I'm very proud of both of you for not only attending that uh, groundbreaking event. Um, I, I just I want to I wish you all the best. And before I forget, Reagan, I want to say congratulations uh, on your graduation. I know you're going to do well up at NAU and be a good lumberjack. Um, and the presentation you guys really presented is, is fantastic. It, it hits so many chords with what the council is looking at, so much so that when you guys looked at a recommendation regarding uh, additional CARE 7 youth specialists and involvement, um, we all know this council, as well as uh, our city staff, how important it is, how counselor specialists are to the school system. And I really want to let you guys know that the council did make a commitment to keeping uh, the, the seven youth specialists um, that you guys reference. Um, I do also like that you mentioned the, the idea of creating a communication plan with students. I think that would be fa fantastic. You cannot have enough communication, especially today. Um, but I don't know some of the criteria for these specialists right now, but I will tell you joint communications plans that you guys propose sounds like a good way to get students more engaged um, when it comes to MIAC and, and our communities. I, I think that's, that's fantastic. I know another thing you talked about is uh, internships and expanding programs uh, for internships for youth. And I know that Councilman Aradano Savage has been a big part of this as, as well as the council about Career Ready Tempe. I know we're looking at getting more businesses signed up to be involved with Career Ready Tempe. Uh, last year was the first year I believe uh, now that we have a program established for Career Ready, that we're looking to get some more businesses signed up. And I know more businesses want to be involved. So there could be additional opportunities for the youth. Um, so I, I mean, there's so many great attributes to what you guys did with your presentation and the youth town hall. And I open it up to my council colleagues. If you guys have any questions or comments uh, for the MIAC uh, members. Yes, Vice Mayor Kubi. Well, thanks so much for your presentation, everyone. And I'm really intrigued with the idea of expanding opportunities to include placement within city departments, or expanding our career ready internships, because I know we've struggled a little bit either to get placement to, to find good positions or to find students that wanted those positions. So I think that's a fantastic idea. I'm also um, really interested in the idea about the students serving on whatever uh, advisory commission or citizens review board we establish once we we get to have that discussion i think it's an excellent idea to have a student representative and the, the question i have is um did you discuss at all sro positions at, at the high schools and what do you think about the sros i know you specialists you, you spoke a lot about but did discussion center at all on the sros because i know there is a discussion at, at the school at tebby union high school district board about sros and would you care to weigh into that tonight? Thank you, Vice Mayor Key, for uh, your question. And um, definitely SROs are um, uh, something that the, the MIAC and even um, some of the students at Utown Hall were discussing. So I think um, when they were, uh, you know, saying that they would like to, to um, maintain some of the, that presence. I think it, it was more specifically with SROs in mind. Um, 
but also with the ability to have uh, different opportunities to engage with the SROs. Um, and we know that um, as it stands, there uh, SROs do have um, some activities that they do with, with students. And uh, if you uh, get a chance to review the uh, Youth Town Hall Action Plan, um, in there, it, it speaks a bit more um, uh, with uh, what students, um, uh, some of their experiences um, uh, with uh, even uh, with SROs or if they know their SRO, SRO or if they've met them. Um, so we're hoping that it, it provides some guidance. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be different what we've heard from some of the schools, uh, what students have kind of the kind of engagement that they've seen. Um, so, uh, and I do want, uh, you know, to keep in mind that this, the feedback that we received was um, in February. Um, and we know that, uh, you know, in light of recent events, um, you know, we're not sure what uh, perceptions or, you know, what students would, how they would feel now. Um, which kind of goes to the point of uh, we would hope that uh, we can continue to have ongoing dialogue. Um, in fact, uh, I will be uh, meeting um, with or speaking to uh, Chief Moyer, who reached out uh, to us um, and has interest in, in in some of the recommendations. So we appreciate that uh, you know she's reaching out and uh, maybe we'll, we'll kind of discuss more what what this could look like. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And before I'm going to, I see some hands up and I have a, a list, um, you know, as a fellow alumni from the Mayor's Youth Advisory Commission, I'm going to call on my fellow alumni, Ar Ms. Councilmember Arlene Chin. She has her hand up for uh, questions. Councilmember Chin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to thank all of the members of MIAC and, and Adrian for your work and for leading and being a voice for our youth in our community. I learned a long time ago that uh, youth voices matter and we pay attention. And I just want to thank you all for your leadership and to encourage you all to continue your participation. Thank you. And well, I should say, uh, I, uh, I appreciate that I was a part of that historical presentation in the slide. <laughs> we, appreciate, we appreciate that as well. <laughs> and thank you for uh, the, the interview, uh, Council Member Arlington, that, uh, that we were able to uh, um, show at the Youth Town Hall. Okay, we're going to go to Council Member Aridano Savage and then Council Member Adams. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As I see, you have used your powers to let Arlene go before me. Um, just because she's an alumni, I get it. That's okay. Actually, but, I didn't see your hand up until then. Uh-huh. Well, and, it, and if she's and I'm being directed by your I'm just by, saying, it's <laughs> historical, so you know it's probably an age thing anyway. <laughs> so anyway, uh hey Adrian and team and and Reagan and Isis and Shay, I, I just can't thank you enough. I mean you guys always are tackling kind of what I'd like to say a little bit difficult and sensitive topics and it really does make a difference. There's been so many things that I think that the city's been able to do and implement and enhance uh, because of your feedback. I mean, it's so valuable to have make sure everybody in our community has a voice and and what you guys do allows that to happen. So, you know, for you taking the time to get involved to utilize and, and enhance your leadership skills is really spot on. I thought you talked about some really great things. Um, we're so proud of Career Ready, but realize that we can grow that and, and um, you know, make sure that we're touching more kids as we go forward, making sure we're building positive relationships with our police and our youth. And, and I love um, what you said about youth specialists and, and how, they, how important that they are to the campuses and uh, really engaging and building relationships. Um, with the students and you know that was always the intent and we want to make sure that uh, they continue to do what they do for a long period of time um, in the years to come but it's it's really great and, and refreshing uh, to hear hear from you all and uh, you know from fellow students it really does make a difference and it's really impactful for me so I, I'm really grateful and Adrian I just want to say thank you 
for your continued energy. I mean, when you came to the city of Tempe, I couldn't be more pleased with, with your enthusiasm and solid work and the way that you're able to connect with the, with our youth. It's, it, it really shows and you continue to do a phenomenal job. So, you know, I'm really grateful for the team and uh, everything that you have done and continue to do. Keep up the great work. And I, I hope we'll have uh, follow-up conversations in the very near future so we can make sure that we're implementing a lot of your ideas um, and feedback. So thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right, Council Member Adams. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have had the good fortune of facilitating the youth town halls over the years, and it's wonderful to see how far the program has grown. Um, thanks to all of you for your hard work uh, and commitment to this valuable program, and I look forward to the program continuing to grow in the future. Great. Thank you so much. And, and again, to Reagan, Shay, and Isis, I got to tell you, thank you so much. You know, we, we look forward to continuing the engagement with your peers, um, with your colleagues in, in your schools, and please get the message out. We're always looking to have more individuals involved. So thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. And good luck to everybody. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you. All righty. We're going to move on to the next item on our agenda is our future agenda items. Does anybody have any? Seeing none. The next item on our agenda uh, is our call to the audience for the Committee of the Whole items listed under Section 4A and 4B. Uh, there are no items under these sections this evening. The next section is items in progress. So I will now turn uh, items in progress. Council Member Aridano Savage, you have an update for us on a uh, Do I have an update for you, Mayor? <laughs> <Just asking. laughs> Hey, we continue to work and I just wanted to, well, you know, you give me the opportunity, I will I'll make a couple comments. I think that we are doing a lot of really great work. We're putting together a final document and I think everybody's going to be really pleased. So thank you to um, Vice Mayor QB for jumping on um, that committee and uh, Council Member Keating. I think we have really implemented some really great things and are getting some um, really impressive feedback from our staff and we'll be able to implement that throughout the city. So it to come soon. Thank you. All right, Council Navarro, I think you're still on the line. Do you have any updates on the uh, ADOT Park the pit as well as the arterial rights, right of ways? Nothing on ADOT. I want to keep that open because we're we, it's a slow moving progress with that. Uh, obviously, because we had to do some deals with ADOT to make that thing happen to access. So we're still in the mix of that, letting those things happen. With the right of way walls, uh, the question is, yeah, it's on the um, five-year CIP. I know we're going to be discussing the details of that. Um, and probably my question is, does it need to be still on the committee of the whole until those details come out? Right. Verification on that. Okay. The, now the next one is, is on the committee. I think we're going to extend uh, we need an extension on the mental health. I'm going to turn that over. We were making some good progress on that with Council Member Adams and Aridondo Savage. So, I'm going to, Council Member Aridondo Savage, you have an update for us? Obviously, I think the uh, COVID-19 put us behind schedule just a little bit, but we are just getting ready to get get uh, our traction moving. We've got all the stakeholders together, so we're hoping to have um, you know follow up with a virtual meeting here in the very near future. So we will probably need at least a 90 day extension for that. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Keating, do you have any updates on the human trafficking committee? Well, it's all there in writing, but I do like to hear myself talk. So um, we did have a very good meeting recently. Um, we understand that obviously, um, you know, budgetary concerns are, are at the forefront of all of our minds now. So we're kind of scaling it back just a little bit. We want to, you know, at the very least, come up with an education campaign uh, in our schools and for our businesses with the existing resources that we have. We brought in a, um, a human trafficking expert from ASU, and she provided staff with a ton of different resources that are already existing in our community that we could utilize. So um, I know staff's kind of going through and getting those and figuring out 
what exactly we, we, we can do and what we should do in the city of Tempe with regards to human trafficking uh, prevention and uh, victim services. So we had a really positive meeting, I'm excited about it, and hopefully um, we'll get another one in here in the next 90 days or so and uh, keep moving forward. All right, with that. Um, Mr. Uh, Mayor, I have a question. Yes, Vice Mayor Keeby. Sorry, sorry, I have my hand up, but I know it's hard to necessarily go back and forth. For um, Councilmember Keating, just had a question uh, about the need for an advocacy center. I know that the uh, Family Justice Commission prepared a report on that. Has the working group discussed that or, or met with any of the Family Justice, Justice Commission members to discuss the need for an advocacy center from their perspective? Yes, the Family Justice Commission is a stakeholder in the working group and has been uh, present at uh, all of our working group meetings. Thank you. There was one member that sent me an email and I'll just re I'll refer it to you from uh, Mary O'Grady, who's a commission member, but I'll just also I'll refer yeah. it over. Yeah, I know Mary very well. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool, thanks. Council Member Adams, you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for the County Island update, we will be meeting again at the end of July. And we've had a lot of interest from the community. I'm very excited about this. Um, so we will be moving forward with uh, this item. And uh, I'm really optimistic about the County Island becoming the city of Tempe. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All righty, moving on. I do have uh, one announcement. I was gonna call upon Chief Reese. Uh, regarding Tempe uh, Fire Medical Rescue Insurance Services Office. And Chief Reese, are you there? I am. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of council, a few months ago, we provided you with a quick update on the information we received regarding our reclassification of our insurance service office rating which is also referred to as ISO. And I told you that we'd be back um, to bring the good news and that we would have a representative from ISO to uh, do a formal presentation tonight. I would like to introduce Stephanie Ruskansky. She is the Western Regional Manager from ISO and she is here to make a presentation. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Hello. Yes, I'm pleased to be here today to congratulate the City of Tempe on obtaining their Class 1 ISO rating. ISO ratings range from Class 1 to Class 10, with 1 being the highest rating a department can achieve. In addition to being a Class 1 community, a Tempe was the first internationally accredited department from the Center of Public Safety Excellence. As you'll see on the next slide, ISO's PPC program measures the effectiveness of public fire protection. Since 1970, uh, we've been conducting these evaluations and measuring the overall capability of the fire department. Better fire protection leads to lower losses, and it's used by insurance companies to establish accurate premiums uh, for both homeowner and commercial property insurance. Our evaluations are done every five years. Accreditation, uh, agencies become accredited after a peer review of their documents, an on-site assessment and participation in a public hearing. Those evaluations are also done every five years. Nationwide, there are 388 class one communities. Uh, that makes it less than 1% of all rated communities that ever achieve that designation. For SIPSI, there are 284 accredited agencies. And there are only about 95 communities that have both the class one and the accreditation as of this publication. Um, this puts Tempe Fire Department in sort of an unofficial hall of fame of accredited class one departments. And I'm really pleased to present that new rating to them. An ISO rating is a community fire suppression evaluation. We use national standards. That's the National Fire Protection Association, American Waterworks and the Association of Public Communication Officials. 
Those reference standards measure uh, multiple areas. We looked at the fire department, all of their operations. We sifted through training records, response records. We looked at the community's water supply. We did flow testing. We looked at community risk reduction, which is all the fire prevention, public safety education, and fire investigation activities happening in the community. And finally, we looked at the 911 center who answers the calls. So what does this all mean? Insurers use ISR ratings to write new business, to review fire loss, and to offer appropriate coverage to homes and businesses. Most homeowner insurance policies are done annually, and so any homeowner's insurance policy that renews after uh, June 1st will have the Class 1 rating attached to it. Commercial insurance policies will also reflect the new rating. Those can renew annually, although some policies are on a three to five year schedule. Any resident in Tempe or any business owner can contact their insurance agent to find out more and to make sure that they're obtaining that new rating. And Chief, I'd like to turn it over to you and really just congratulate you again on obtaining a class one rating as well as being an accredited community. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, in closing, uh, I just want to share with you that when I was first notified that we were going through our ISO rating review, um, I had gone through several in the past and, and we had been close and I was obviously hopeful we would get a class one. Um, I reached out immediately to Deputy Chief Chris Snow, Captain Joe Escontrias, who led our team, the Tempe team through this, and Strategic Management and Diversity uh, Director Rosenchowski, who is also the Interim Municipal uh, Utilities Director at the time. What you have up here is I will not go through uh, each individual by name, but I, I felt it, they had to be recognized for the hard work they do every single day. Um, this does just not happen overnight. This, this is a team effort and it happens every single day for us to achieve a class one rating. As I said, we've been there so many times in the past. We have been very close so many times in the past, uh, but I will go over the areas here. Computer, computer maintenance management systems, the water's utility supervisors, uh, obviously fire medical rescue, water utilities technicians, the data acquisition team. And last, I want to thank the representative, the field representative who assisted us uh, through all of this work and uh, all of the efforts. That is Susan uh, Wildrick. I believe I pronounced that right. I, I hope I did, but Susan has been uh, truly an advocate for us. Last, I want to congratulate Tempe Fire Medical Rescue and the City of Tempe for being, as uh, was indicated earlier, one of only 95 Class 1 accredited fire departments in the country. With that, we can now turn it over to the City Manager and if there are any questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of Council. Thank you. Councilmember Adams, you have your hand up. And then Councilmember Arredondo Savage. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so I just want to uh, compliment Greg Reese and the entire fire department for your incredible work. This is so prestigious, this award, and I'm so proud uh, of, of you winning it and you deserve it. And thank you so much. And I also really want to drive home the fact that this is going to save the rest of Tempe money uh, in that their insurance rates should go down based on this incredible fire rating. So I just want to thank you all for your hard work and and for being uh, the obviously um, the best department in the country as far as I'm concerned. So good job, good work, keep it up. All right, Councilmember Aerdano Savage. Hey, thank you, uh, Mayor Mitchell. Hey, uh, Chief Reese. I just want to just give you a really big thank you for your leadership because things like this don't happen by themselves. And, and I know you, you're a team player and uh, you mentioned everybody that uh, has really taken part in that. And I get that. And, and I appreciate that. And I agree with you, but it does take a really solid leader uh, to make these things happen and to, to get those individuals to want to follow you. And you do, and you care a lot about this community. You care a lot about our people and it shows. So this, uh, like I think Stephanie said, makes you, uh, Chief Reese, uh, a Hall of Famer. It makes us a Hall of Famer, I think, in the sense of what we're able to do within our community. Because I got to tell you, uh, Jennifer mentioned it a little bit. I've been in the insurance business for a few years. And I cannot tell you of any other city that I know off off the top of my head that is rated a number one. And it's so cool that we have 
that option now. So I would suggest to all of our residents and to everybody that owns a commercial property or in the city of Tempe to make sure you tell your insurance uh, carrier to check your ISO rating because uh, she's right. Hopefully it will save you a little bit of money and it's from the hard work and um, of this really big team that continues to work hard to do what's right for the city of Tempe. So you've earned it, you've worked hard for it. Uh, thanks chief and team. Uh, this is something that we should all really be proud of. Thanks Mayor. Thank you and, and chief, thank you for your leadership as well. Um, we're really uh, lucky to have you and have the great team of the men and women uh, the Tempe Fire Medical Rescue, plus the men and women of the entire city workforce. So we're very lucky and, and blessed. So thank you all for everything. Anybody else have anything for Chief Reese or, or City Manager Ching? Andrew, do you have any announcements? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council. My only announcement tonight is to, again, recognize that tomorrow, uh, for the first time, the city of Tempe be recognizing Juneteenth as a city holiday and therefore uh, several most city offices and functions will be closed in recognition and honor of that day. Thank you. All right. Our next meeting for the work study session will be August 20th, 2020. With that, have everyone have a safe night. We are adjourned.